the characters that appear on our way while playing the GTA San Andreas story gives this game a lot of great value. At each stage, we meet a character who stands out from the others. At every stage, we meet characters who arouse completely extreme emotions in us. Some characters, like Vas Montenegro from the third installment of Far Cry, strongly motivate us to push hard ahead and try to take revenge at all costs. And yet, another type of character, such as Woozy, evoke a lot of positive emotions in us. On the other hand, others, such as Big Smoke or Old Reese, generate situations in the game that leave us with several very interesting questions, the answers to which are unobvious. In 1992, a great tragedy hits the Johnson family. An innocent woman named Beverly Johnson is killed instead of the leader of the Grove Street families, her son Sweet, in the attack executed by the Ballas. Carl Johnson, staying in Liberty City at that moment, is very quickly informed about the whole incident by his siblings, and that's why, a few days later, CJ boards a plane to Los Santos to be at his mother's funeral. Out of the airport terminal, CJ hails a cab and heads to his childhood home on Grove Street. Sadly, the journey is interrupted by corrupt officers from the crash unit, but the prior destination remains the same. Even though the road and the time to reach the place are much longer, CJ eventually reaches his destination, where an unpleasant but at the same time funny surprise awaits him. You picked the wrong house, fool! Hey, 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 big smoke! It's me, Carl! Chill, chill! CJ? Oh my dog! What's up? <laughs> Yep, fortunately the whole situation ends well and CJ does not get hit on the head with a baseball bat. However, in all this confusion, CJ's attention completely escapes the suspicious situation that the protagonist of San Andreas witnessed. After all, what was Big Smoke with a baseball bat doing in the Johnson's house? Players have been wondering about this since the release of the game. A lot of people were inclined from the very beginning that this was one of the first signs of betrayal on Smoke's part. This makes a lot of sense because, considering how many other clues suggesting Smoke's evil intentions appeared later in the storyline, it's no wonder that this situation also seemed very suspicious to the players. Anyway, now you have an episode in the tab where many of these signs of betrayal are discussed. The problem is that there are many reasons to show that this whole situation was misinterpreted. While Big Smoke's presence in Johnson's house is very suspicious indeed, Big Smoke had no intention of committing any murder in this place. Going back to the merits, there are many arguments for this, and they're very accurate. Many players from the very beginning said that Smoke was waiting for Sweet at his house to kill him. In the beginning, yes, one could think so, but only with the simultaneous skipping of many important things that clearly show that it was not so at all. First, notice how Big Smoke reacts to CJ. You picked the wrong house, fool! Hey, hey! The man speaks impersonally to the guy who just broke into Johnson's house. Not a word about Sweet or CJ here. Rather, it looks as if Big Smoke is simply surprised that someone has entered the house and, making almost no noise, moves around the house. Of course, this is not an indisputable point to make. You could say that Big Smoke was lurking for Sweet, but CJ surprised him. In turn, because Smoke had not seen CJ for many years, he did not recognize him at first and therefore addressed him as some kind of burglar. However, even if that were the case, it's still easy to disprove the theory that Smoke was waiting for Sweet to finish him off in case he made it out of the cemetery shootout. Well, there are many other reasons in favor of this. One of the best arguments is whether an assassination attempt on Sweet would be a good idea, considering that both Sweet and CJ could survive the setup at the cemetery and get back home together, which would make things much more difficult for Big Smoke. Yet another good point is that Sweet did not live in that house. When the gentleman returned during the Sweet and Kendall mission on Grove Street, Sweet went straight to his house instead of entering his mother's house at least for a moment. Also, even assuming that Big Smoke wanted to kill Sweet, he should rather ambush him in another house, specifically in Sweet's house. Moreover, if Big Smoke wanted to murder anyone in this place, he would point his pistol at someone which, by the way, we know he had in his pants and what turned out soon after. Of course, you could say that Big Smoke didn't want to make noise, but a baseball bat seems to be an even dumber idea. If Big Smoke had come at Sweet with a baseball bat, this is where Sweet would probably quickly pull out his gun and then shoot Smoke in the head. So, as we can see, it doesn't add up at all. 
In addition, it's not even worth considering that committing a murder in the afternoon hours at Johnson's house would be a good idea. Quite the contrary, because not much time has passed since the assassination we witnessed in the introduction movie, which left the gang on perpetual alert. All members of the set knew that someone was trying to kill Sweet, which made everyone more vigilant. Of course, some members of the families might have been bribed, but certainly not all of them. So it would be impossible to murder Sweet on Grove Street at this point without anyone noticing. If Smoke were to hit Sweet or CJ with a baseball bat, the scream of both men would be huge. A group of bystanders would quickly be found on the spot, while family soldiers could rush to the house for rescue. Summing up all this, we see perfectly well that ambushing Sweet at Johnson's house alone and in the afternoon didn't make any sense. This kind of action was too risky. There were so many unfavorable circumstances that you would have to be a total idiot to try your luck in this particular situation. What's more, there's only a slight chance that such an action would end successfully for Smoke. Going further, some people believe that Smoke wanted to plant the bug to find out information. For example, about where Sweet would be in the coming days to potentially set up another ambush for him. However, we can rule that out as well. First of all, if Smoke wanted to plan a bug, he should rather do it at Sweet's house, because this is where Sweet spends his time the most and has the biggest amount of meetings, which we witnessed during the missions. Secondly, he wouldn't have to be completely alone. The bug could be planted fast enough that he could do it while being in Sweet's house with him when he went to the toilet. And thirdly, subsequent missions in the game show that Smoke continued to try to convince Sweet to get into the crack trade so that he wouldn't have to be killed. Generally speaking, the issue of planting bugs is definitely out of the debate. Another possibility is that Big Smoke was looking for something. However, this might also be ruled out quickly because it's unlikely to determine what he was exactly looking for. Families didn't have any good weapons or money or anything in general that Smoke might want to take. And of course, bearing in mind that he was looking for something specifically at CJ's mother house, it only makes this option highly implausible. So what was Smoke doing at the Johnson's house? To answer this question, we need to analyze almost the entire day of the funeral. CJ was supposed to fly to Los Santos that day, take a taxi, and arrive at his home on Grove Street, where his friends and siblings were waiting. When CJ would walk into his house, he would probably have left the suitcase there, and then he, Sweet, Ryder, Big Smoke, and Kendall would have gone to the funeral together. However, those plans were ruined by Crash, who decided to have a little chit-chat with CJ. Thanks to this, CJ was framed for the murder of Officer Pendleberry and unintentionally started another beef with Sweet, who was pissed at CJ for being late for his own mother's funeral. When the main character of the game was in the moving police car with the crash unit, at the same time CJ's friends decided to go without him to the funeral that was about to take place. Big Smoke, on the other hand, offered to stay at home and wait for CJ. As soon as he appears on Grove Street, Smoke will take him to the cemetery to meet the rest of his friends. And while this story sounds pretty disappointing compared to the story of Smoke ambushing Sweet at Johnson's house, it's much more realistic. Big Smoke's sole purpose in this situation was to ensure that the people most threatening his operation were in one place when the ball is committed in attack. No one was expected to survive this ambush except for Big Smoke and maybe Ryder. So in the end, Smoke had to attend CJ's mother's funeral. If he hadn't and Sweet and CJ had survived, Smoke would have gotten their attention and could have been in big trouble. Not only would the Johnson siblings not be happy that Smoke was not at the funeral, and thus missed an important family event, but it would also be very suspicious. After all, it would look strange that Smoke did not appear where he was supposed to be, and that's just when the ballers attacked the most important people in the Grove Street families. Although, considering that no one blamed Smoke and Ryder for not showing up during the house party mission when the ballers invaded Grove Street, anything can be expected. However, at least in theory, it sounds bad. Hey! A ballers posse's about to run up. They're headed up here right now. Looks like we backed them ballers against the wall, huh? Hey, CJ, strap up. It's Grove Street. Write in the comments if you agree with this course of events or not. If you disagree with this new theory, be sure to explain why you think so. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Take care and see you soon.